hey, I'm Ashok. I hear from many people who are not from programming or software background, but getting into data science field, that they find it difficult to connect to the database, retrieve data. And this video is, is, is for that. It's called a SQL for data science. Majority of the database you're connecting are structured or relational database management systems. And SQL or SQL, Structured Query Language, is a universal language to connect to the uh, relational database management system, retrieve the data. So we go through uh, the basic Python packages which we use for connecting to the SQL database and we retrieve the data. We also look into connecting uh, different tables and retrieve the data using join commands and also we explore where commands. And this tutorial is limited for selecting and retrieving the data. So we are not really going into creating the databases, updating or deleting the records because that's not really belonging to data science. So we predominantly focus on getting the data from the databases and most of the processing we do in our own workflow. All right, so I'm really excited for this video. Let's get started. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It's pronounced as SQL. In this session, we look into what is RDBMS, which is Relational Database Management System, and SQL versus NoSQL, what's the differences, and why SQL or NoSQL preferred for a certain applications. And we, 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 we dig into connecting to SQL database with Python packages, SQL Alchemy and PyMySQL. And then we look into fetching data from SQL database tables to Pandas data frame object. And as you know, Pandas is a base package for all data manipulation in data science. Base package in Python. So I'm assuming uh, basic, for basic knowledge or a knowledge in Pandas. And if you don't have the knowledge in Pandas package, then I suggest to click the video uh, given in the URL uh, in, in the description and, and you know complete that Pandas tutorial and, and, and revisit this SQL tutorial. And then we go into retrieving data from table with conditions, where condition and also logical conditions, logical operators and an R. And then we go into uh, the joining tables and retrieve data through select command. What we don't discuss in this, in this session, uh, in this tutorial is, we're not going to update the data, the, uh, update the, uh, the tables, create databases, create tables, structure them and all the stuff because that's more into the, for the software development. So if you're developing an application, you need to do to structure the data, write, update, delete. For data science, we are mostly concerned about retrieving the data from the databases. So select command is the one which is, which is relevant for us. All right, let's get started. So this is a table and this table um, is, is um, is, is, is an orders table. So let's imagine an online store, online store, and this table is orders. It has order ID, order date, customer ID, product ID, sales and quantity. I have made very few columns or the fields because I want this exam to be simple, but, but, but in practical, you will have a, uh, 15, 20, even more fields in order table, all right? So what you observe here, in the customer details, we only have customer ID. For example, you have BH, H, and 11710. And it doesn't have any other information. And this information is stored in a, a separate table called a customer's table, okay? And this contains, for example, this BH, BH1170 has, here it is, it's, it's, it's a customer name is Brosina Hoffman, it's Los Angeles and uh, California, and the pin code is 9032. But why do we do this? Well, one of the main reasons we do this as a part of this RDBMS concept is 
saving a lot of space. Just think about it. If you put these details, the customer name, city, state, and pin code, and just to remind you, this is only few fields I've selected. There might be 10, 20 fields related to the customer. And this basically comes over here, right? And if the customer buys another product from the online store, something like this, even the second record is from the same customer, even the, even the fourth record, I, I would say it's fifth record starting from zero. So fifth record, so three times in this nine records, this customer has actually repeated three times, right? Rather than customer ID, if, start, if you start putting all the details of the customer, it will occupy a lot of space, right? And the same goes with your product ID. So rather than putting a product ID, if you put the product details itself, uh, every time someone orders a product, for example, you have this OFFLA um, 240, 1000240 is appearing over here as well, right? So every time someone orders this, this product, you have to really put the entire details of the product. And this is, it's, it's really a lot of space. And if the transaction runs into millions of records, it will be a massive, exponentially uh, high uh, storage is required to store it. And this is the main advantage of its RDBMS, Relational <coughs> Database Management System. And even today, when I say today, I'm talking, uh, uh, it's, it's year 2019, RDBMS is the uh, highly used uh, database system in the world, right? Well, <clears throat> it's called a SQL because SQL is, 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 is a structured language used to retrieve data, manipulate the data, in fact, in general, managing the data in the RDBMS system. NoSQL, which is the, 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 the alternative of it, has gained a huge popularity in recent days for the simple reason that you don't have to have many tables and connecting all the tables. You store the entire transaction in just one record. Well, well, that has a disadvantage of having a huge storage space. That's the whole reason we have RDBMS, right? But well, given thanks to technology breakthroughs, given that we, we have no real constraints of the memory so we, we have huge memories megabytes terabytes can be stored this made it possible for NoSQL to become popular NoSQL actually consumes a lot of memory space but given that NoSQL is better in terms of the retrieving fast and it's highly scalable right NoSQL is gaining popularity it's it's faster because look at the SQL so it has to really connect I mean basically when you run a query your orders has to connect to the customer with the customer ID and connect to the product table with the product ID, retrieve the data, then get the full information. In NoSQL, all the information is stored in just one flat record. All right, that's a major difference. I shall um, record in another video with a very detailed differences between SQL and MySQL. So uh, let's move ahead and look into um, how do you actually connect to the SQL database using Python. <clears throat> All right, so I have a, a blank Jupyter notebook. Again, if you're not uh, very uh, aware of Jupyter, if you haven't used it, I have another video. Also mentioned that in the description. Please watch that video and come back to this. Jupyter is a notebook. It's a, it's a platform for data science development. Okay, and the two packages I have mentioned is pip install sql alchemy and pip install py mysql <clears throat> just run this two and the symbol over here exclamation is is directing the pipe with jupiter to run it in the uh, the shell the anaconda shell so just running this For me, it says both are already satisfied because they have been already uh, installed. And it's of course giving me some suggestions about upgrading the pick. But uh, when you install, if you are doing it the first time, 
So basically, it, it downloads and then installs. It's, it's a small package, it won't take much time. Right? And then, we simply import the packages which have installed. Let's say, um, for, for, from the SQL or Chemi, SQL or Chemi, we import create engine. That's that's the object. That's the module we would like to use. And of course, we go ahead and import pandas, and and that's it. And um, the next step is to actually get the details of the database. And this should be provided by the by the client or whoever is sharing the data with you. So I have um, a, a test server being set up in Datamites test server. And these are the information. So you'll be getting something like the, the, the endpoint. In this case, this is the IP number along with the port number, username, uh, password of the user who has access, and the database name. Okay. I'm just going to run this and store all these details in the corresponding variables. All right. And then I'm going to simply call as connection, C O N N. And I can create a connection by using this object from SQL Alchemy. And this is the format. It's MySQL plus PySQL. And you put a colon, slash, slash. And you can actually give the details. For example, the next one would be a, a, the username. And um, after username, you need to put a colon. So you can do that by this. And, and say plus. By using plus, we are concatenating the string. I'll say pass and then just being careful not missing a command quotation and next is actually host host and then you need to use a forward slash and then db name so this is your a connection string and and this this actually creates a connection string and then you say um, table names and this should actually give you table names just running this should give you table names let's try that okay I did I didn't no errors okay always land up errors and then we fix it but lucky we got no errors so we have three tables orders customers and products very similar to what you have seen in the, the whiteboard explanation Let's first connect to the orders table and retrieve the data. And that we will do it by using creating a query string again. And this is what we call it as SQL query, right? And we are focused on select. So I'm going to use select. So when I say select star, it selects all the fields. For example, this is the table we are talking about. So I'm saying, give me all the fields, order ID, order date, customer ID, product ID, sales, and quantity. I say star, and say from, and I simply mention the table name, orders, okay? And this is a query, I mean, this is a simple string. And then I run this query, like pd.read SQL, because I'm using pandas to run a SQL query, and I simply pass on the query, and then I pass on the connection. So it connects to the database using connections, connection, um, the connection object, and the query string is given over here. It simply runs and returns the data. Let me capture this data into a orders, um, orders variable, and this will be a data frame, okay? And um, let me just print down the orders shape just to know what is the shape and then I can simply print down the orders itself. Run it, it might take, oh, it didn't take much time. A very small database, so it didn't take time. So we see that we have retrieved the entire database, in fact, the, the ent sorry, entire table. In the table, you have nine rows, zero to eight, nine rows, six fields or columns because it's right now in, 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 um, in data frame order ID, order date, customer ID, product ID, sales. Just to see the type of this order, you'll see that it's a data frame because it's been retrieved by pandas read SQL function. You see it is actually a pandas core frame, data frame object, okay? Here we go. So it is actually that simple to connect 
and you really don't have to remember this and just have to you know copy paste this string and make sure that you put the right host name username and password and also mention the db name and and you don't have to really know the table names because that can be simply retrieved by using a table underscore names uh, function from the connection it gives you all the tables in the database and then you can use a select command in the query to connect to the table and retrieve all the records and store it in a data frame okay we can actually repeat this for for other um, for example let's say do it for customers and see okay sorry oh, okay so let me uh, keep that orders orders and for customers I call it as customers itself makes more sense I will say customers and say customers run it so we have 10 records in customers which means we have 10 customer records and we have five columns customer ID customer name city state and postal code let me also do that for what was the third column it was products it so it's, it's products so products then I also make this as products Great, so we have 13 products and corresponding details are given over there. That's how you select and retrieve the data.